In this video, we're going to take a look at how to draw Bohr Rutherford diagrams for ions. So by the end of this video, you'll know what an ion is, as well as how to figure out the number of electrons, protons, and neutrons in an ion. And then you'll be able to take that information and construct Bohr Rutherford diagrams from an ion from its position in the periodic table. So what is an ion? Well, an ion is simply an atom that has a charge. And that charge can be either overall positive or overall negative. So what we're going to do is we're first going to take a look at our periodic table here. And if you remember, group 1 elements have one valence electron, group 2 elements have two, and we can continue this over to group 3 or 13 has 3, and so on, all the way across our periodic table up to our noble gases, which is eight full uh, eight, eight valence electrons or a full valence shell. For helium, it's just two. And so what we need to do now is we need to take a look at how ions are formed. And ions are formed by either losing or gaining electrons in order to have a full valence shell. So let's start with looking at those elements with either one, two, or three valence electrons. So these elements will form positively charged ions. And the way that they do that is they lose electrons in order to go down to a full valence shell. So group one elements will lose one electron, group two elements will lose two electrons, and group three elements will lose three electrons. And when they lose either one, two, or three electrons, they will then have a full valence shell and it will form elements or ions with a charge of either plus one for group one, plus two for group two, or plus three for group three. These ions, when they have a positive charge, they're called cat ions. And the way that I remember this, and it's very silly, but if you think of the Cheshire Cat in Alice in Wonderland, if you've seen that movie, that Cheshire Cat has a really big smile. And so he's a cat with a big smile. He's very positive. And so that's how I remember it. Kind of silly, I know. Let's now take a look at the opposite side of the periodic table. So let's take a look at those with either five, six, or seven valence electrons. Now in this scenario, it's actually easier to gain electrons than it is to lose them. And that being is that it's much harder to lose, say, five electrons than it is to gain three to make a full valence shell. So elements with five, six, or seven valence electrons will gain electrons to become negatively charged anions, are what they are called. And so in group five, they need to gain three electrons in order to have a full valence shell. So these ones will actually be a charge of negative 3. For group 6 or group 16, they need to gain 2 electrons, so they'll have a charge of negative 2. And for group 7 or 17, these only need to gain 1 electron, so they will have a charge of negative 1. Now we'll see in later lessons that those that lose electrons or our cations are typically metals. And those that gain electrons that have a negative charge are typically our nonmetals. So it's worthwhile to know, but we will revisit this idea when we come back to it in another video. 
The last column I want to talk about is this group 4 or group 14. So these are the ones that have four valence electrons. And so in order to fill their shell, they are kind of, they can go either way. They could lose four electrons or they could gain four electrons. And so depending on which way we go, they could have, if they lose four electrons, they'd have a plus four charge. If they gain four electrons, they would have a negative four charge. So they can form both types. And again, that's just a worthwhile little piece of information that we kind of need to know. So going back to then determining the number of protons, electrons, and neutrons, in an atom, remember our number of protons is our atomic number, and our number of neutrons is our mass number, which is our atomic mass that's rounded off to the nearest whole number minus our atomic number. Now we can add and change our equation for figuring out the number of electrons to include those that are ions, by taking the number of protons, which is our atomic number, and subtracting the charge on the atom. So what we need to do now when we're creating Bohr-Rutherford diagrams is pay really close attention to what the question is asking because we need to know whether we're forming or drawing our Bohr-Rutherford diagram for an atom or if we're drawing it for an ion. Okay, and so an atom, the charge would be zero. So effectively that becomes our same equation that we had before. But if we have a charge now and an ion, we have to take that into account in terms of the number of electrons that we have. So let's look at a couple of examples. And let's start with a sodium ion. Remember a sodium ion, it has an atomic number of 11 and a atomic mass of 22.99, so its mass number would be 23. So what does that mean? Our number of protons is our atomic mass, or sorry, our atomic number, which is 11. Our number of neutrons is our mass number of 23 minus 11, so that gives us 12. And now our number of electrons, we need to take our number of protons, and subtract the charge that a sodium ion would have. Because sodium is in group one, it's going to form a plus one charge. And so we're gonna subtract one to the, from this, which means we need 10 electrons in our Bohr-Rutherford diagram. Now let's do our steps. So we've got our nucleus, we've got our protons is 11, our neutrons is 12, and then we're gonna start filling our shells. So we got shell number one, two electrons, and then shell number two, we have eight more, and so we've got 10 total, okay? And the way we can double check this is to see, does our final shell, our valent shell, is it full? And uh, it is in this case, so that means that we've got the right number of electrons as well. The last thing we need to do anytime we have an ion is we put square brackets around it. And then we also indicate the charge outside. So this would have a plus one charge and we would put square brackets around the Bohr-Rutherford diagram. Let's try one more example. So let's take sulfur. Sulfur has an atomic number of 16, and it has an atomic mass of 32.06, which means its mass number is 32. And so the number of protons is our atomic number of 16. Our number of neutrons, 32 minus 16, which gives us 16. And then our number of electrons, now sulfur is in group six or 16, which means that it will gain two electrons to have a full valent shell. So it has a negative two charge. So if we do the number of electrons, we've got 16 minus 
negative 2, which means we're really doing 16 plus 2, or we should have 18 electrons total. Going through our steps, here's our nucleus. We got 16 protons, we've got 16 neutrons, and then we've got one shell with two, a second shell with eight, so that's 10 total, and then one more shell with eight more. Okay, and that gives us now 18 electrons. We can see our valent shell is full. The last thing we need to include are our square brackets, and then our charge for sulfur is negative two. Okay. So that's it for this lesson. Let's move on to our next task.